I'm Sarah Gore and this is Open House NYC. This week we are all about unique personalized spaces that constantly surprise, including this Upper West Side townhouse with a loft-like flow. And how this artist turned chef created a welcoming neighborhood restaurant right around the corner from his own home. We meet artist, designer, and blogger DeBito at his serene yet vibrant home. Plus, we are in Brooklyn with this author who shows how a life writing about design influenced the look of her own apartment. But before all of that, we see how this lifelong New Yorker made her childhood home her own. Welcome to Open House NYC, everyone. Today, I am coming to you from this one-of-a-kind mansion in Hamilton Heights. Built in 1899 in the Flemish Revival style, the distinct facade with its bay windows and turret was made famous as the main location of Wes Anderson's cult classic, The Royal Tenenbaums. The director spotted it on a location scout and was drawn to its storybook quality, a quality that continues all throughout its approximately 6,000 square feet of interiors. Original details abound like these stained glass transoms, fine woodwork and ornate mantelpieces, and mix perfectly with more modern renovations like this chef's kitchen. And with over 50 windows with exposures to the north, east, and west, you can be sure of plenty of natural light. This is definitely a home that manages to be both whimsical and stately. Let's kick things off on the Upper West Side with teacher and design blogger Hattie Colt. Hattie is a lifelong New Yorker who actually grew up in this apartment. And when her parents finally moved, they were able to transfer the rent-stabilized lease to their daughter. And that's when Hattie made it completely her own and discovered her love of interior design. Take a look. Hi, I'm Hattie. I'm a special education teacher and design blogger, and welcome to my home on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. This is the apartment that I grew up in since I was 10 years old. Over the past few years, I've made quite a few changes, and I can't wait to show you. We are standing in my foyer. I recently painted the walls in here this slate color because I love the color and I really wanted to define the space and make it separate from the hallway. And a fun design choice I made was my front door. So I thought, why not slap some wallpaper up onto it? On this wall, I have a mirror that I thrifted. I just really love this mirror because I think it gives a lot of character that's really reminiscent of the time periods which this apartment was built, which was the 1890s. So we are sitting in my sitting room, which used to be my childhood bedroom. I have made so many changes in this room over the years. I got this amazing green velvet sofa that actually pulls out into a queen size bed. I got these eight foot tall bookshelves, which I have filled with treasures. I got a gilded mirror, which I love because I really wanted this room to have a Parisian feel. A vintage desk at the window and this black spindly light fixture because I wanted to give a balance to all of the antiques that I have. So we are entering the living room, which is truly the center of the apartment. It's flanked on either side by both bedrooms, which you can enter through these gorgeous original pocket doors. But you can also enter the rooms here or here. So I chose to have my couch floating in the middle of the room, which allows me space for my dining nook where I have a mid-century round table. I have two fireplaces in my apartment, which I'm super grateful for. Unfortunately, they are no longer functioning. And the original tiles, they were in rough shape. So I covered them up with contact paper in this star print, and it gave me a good chance to bring some blue into the room. When my parents left, I quickly decided to make this my bedroom since it is the bigger bedroom. I definitely went with a blue theme in here, which you can see in the wall color, the chaise, the chandelier, but I balanced it out with the red that's in the carpet. 
I love this room and so do my cats. I am eternally grateful to have this apartment. Having a rent stabilized apartment is every New Yorker's dream and getting to work on it has ignited my love for interior design. That's it, thanks so much for coming and seeing how I made my childhood apartment my own home. Coming up in just a few, how this journalist found design inspiration in her own apartment. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now we're in the Ocean Hill section of Brooklyn with writer and editor Jessica Cumberbatch Anderson, whose work has appeared in the New York Times, Architectural Digest, and El Decor, among others. So as someone who often writes about design, it stands to reason that she knows a thing or two, which you can see in her chic yet family-friendly apartment. See for yourself. I'm Jessica Cumberbatch. I'm a writer and design enthusiast, and we are at my apartment in Ocean Hill, Brooklyn. It's a two bedroom, it's about a thousand square feet, and we've been here for about 13 years. In that time, my taste has really changed and evolved, but this is where we are now, and I can't wait to show it to you. When you walk into the apartment, the first thing you see is the living room. And lighting in here has really been a challenge. So when it came to the color palette, I wanted to keep it really light and monochromatic and let this gold and cream wallpaper that we have really shine. The sofa, we definitely went a little bit more muted, but I was looking for something that was sleek and streamlined and most importantly, super comfortable. The coffee table is a newer addition. We swapped in something clean just because it's lighter and it also has this gold base which really picks up on the other gold accents in the space. And since it's transparent, it gives you a really good look at the carpet. The design here just reminded me of some of the dots in the abstract design and the wallpaper. So this red chair is uh, a little famous thanks to my daughter. We took her monthly baby photos here, but yeah, it's really special for that reason too. When you move further into the apartment, you come to our dining area. We went with this nice slate blue almost that matches the upholstery and the cushions. We also use this space to display a lot of family photos and artwork that we kind of had laying around and made this nice gallery wall. I was seeing a lot of bubble chandeliers in some of the house stories that I was writing about. I found this one, which we put in our banquette area. It's a real statement piece. The bulbs are so big and bright. It is another example of how we were able to really brighten up a tiny space. The bedroom was always much more muted than the rest of the apartment. This year, I felt the need to bring in a little bit more color, so we got some new window treatments. We brought in a yellow coverlet that really gives it a little pop. And the chandelier, it's made of strings, essentially. The bed is fully upholstered, so it's a nice place to kind of sit back and lounge and do some work sometimes. <laughs> The mirror, again, really mimics the metallic elements that you see, especially in the living room. It has this metallic sort of silver gold frame. It's a good piece to really make the space look a little bit bigger and bring in some light from the two windows. This is truly my escape from the world. I hope my apartment shows you how accessible design can be. And for me, that it's a process that evolves over time. It's taken me years to come to a place that I really love. And I hope you love it too. Don't go anywhere because there is so much more ahead on Open House, including... I'm gonna invent this right now, hashtag Tiki Chic. And this is Tiki Chic right here for you. Welcome back. Now we're in Los Angeles at the home of the designer and artist known as DeBito. He believes your home should be a celebration of the things you love and a welcoming refuge filled with color and pattern. Take a look. Hi, I'm DeBito, but you can call me Dab. 
and I am a designer and artist living in Los Angeles. Welcome to my home. I love color. For me, color brings so much mood and vibe to a space. Designing is all about celebrating your life and your family and friends and bringing all of those things that brings a lot of joy to your home. Let's get started with a tour, shall we? So the welcoming energy from the entryway guides you into the living room, which is fun, inviting, and relaxing. Yellow is really one of my favorite colors. It just brings me a lot of joy and happiness. And then I just kind of like started layering things that are like warm tones in here. So the rug is orange and yellow, and I have a yellow sofa, but I also have like yellow textiles and yellow pillows. And the artwork ties it all in. As you can see, I've created a gallery wall. It's one of my favorite ways to like bring a bold statement to a space. Overall, this living room just brings me a lot of joy and I just feel very, very, you know, happy in this space. All right, so this is my new favorite space in the house because this is where I work, I eat, I sleep, I do everything here. For me, I love wallpaper and I love tropical wallpaper. It's a way to bring the outdoors in. I always wanted to use the color purple and so I chose a purple banquette and I love round tables and this is like the perfect size for this area. I've always liked the tiki vibe and I've added all those natural elements like the woven chandelier and the woven shades. So I'm gonna invent this right now. I'm calling it hashtag tiki chic and this is tiki chic right here for ya. Verbena. So this is my kitty Verbena. Meet Luigi. They're super friendly and sweet. So this is the primary bedroom. I consolidated two rooms to create a bedroom and an ensuite bathroom. This is a closet. As impressive as they are, if you open these cabinets doors up, these are actually IKEA past cabinets. So we saved a lot here and splurged a lot here. So there's really no right or wrong way to decorate or design. So when I first moved in here, this room was super tiny and we didn't have any windows here. I wanted to blow it up, add these huge windows to bring the outdoors in. And we have this gorgeous fig tree in Bougainvillea. And so I just feel like I'm on vacation in Bali in here. Got a lot of vacation vibes. So California is known for its weather and I just love coming out here to really enjoy nature and get some inspiration. I reupholstered this outdoor sofa with this umbrella fabric. It has this gorgeous pattern and it's fade resistant and I love it. So I talk a lot about, you know, bring the outdoors in for my interiors, but in this area, I wanted to bring the indoors out. So when I say um, bring the indoors out, I mean, you know, creating a very relaxing lounge moment. So a sofa, chairs, a coffee table, where you can just like read a book and have a cocktail. As you can see, I'm fully enjoying my outdoor area and I'm gonna go read a book and enjoy a cocktail and you can see yourself out. Bye everyone. Coming up in just a few, how this artist turned chef created a restaurant in his own neighborhood. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now we're in Hudson Square with artist turned chef Ned Baldwin, owner of Houseman, a restaurant he created to fill a void in his own neighborhood. Ned shows how the restaurant was designed to feel like a home away from home, a welcoming place to enjoy good food and company. Take a look. Hi everybody, welcome to Hudson Square. I'm Ned Baldwin, I'm chef owner of Houseman Restaurant. I live right around the corner over there and this is my restaurant here, why don't you come on inside? I looked really hard for a restaurant. I think I probably saw 70 different spaces. One of the things I was looking for was a neighborhood that actually needed a restaurant, which is not so easy to find in New York. As it turned out, Hudson Square was that neighborhood. Those that are here, we all kind of know each other. I walk down the street and I know practically everybody. We're overjoyed to be cooking for our customers in New York again. Houseman is a translation of a Norwegian word, husmans coast, which means houseman's food. What that means to them is traditional local food. A lot of people ask what kind of food we cook at Houseman, and I always answer American food. Some people think of American food as like a hamburger and a milkshake. The America that I live in here in New York, there's food from all over the world. This neighborhood restaurant has a great roasted chicken, a great hamburger, 
French fries that people like to talk about, a great steak frite. But in addition to that, we like to challenge ourselves and we like to experiment. Before I was a cook, I was an artist and a builder. I've always made stuff. Cooking is similar to art to the extent that every day you come to work, you make a lot of stuff. For me, I really, I just like to work all the time. That somehow gives me some sort of strange inner peace. By the end of the day, you have accomplished all the things you want to accomplish, and you clean the kitchen, and you go home, and it's immensely satisfying. The purpose of the design at Houseman is for guests to feel comfortable eating dinner. When you walk in on the right, there's this beautiful weathered plaster wall. The restaurant works with an illustrator. His name is Gerardo Blumenkrantz. He has drawn into this weathered wall, and some people see it and some people don't. The tables at Houseman are made from slabs from an old bowling alley that was up near Yankee Stadium. When you're eating at Houseman, you're eating on top of a vintage bowling alley. And this is our zinc bar. In Paris, a zinc is a bistro that serves a particular kind of food, has a particular kind of service, and I think we're similar in that regard. I think occasional lighting is nice in a restaurant, so I bought a whole bunch of mid-century desk lamps. I absolutely love cookbooks, and I keep lots of them in and around the restaurant. And amazingly, one of the greatest opportunities this restaurant has given me was I was able to produce my own cookbook called How to Dress an Egg. I show you how to cook something, and then I show you how to dress it up. Not unlike your apartment, the design of this restaurant is additive. We've problem solved over the years and taken some stuff away, added some other things. To that extent, it is a home, at least for me. Since my family lives around the corner from the restaurant, they eat here quite often. They can stop in for dinner, they can do their homework here. It allows me to integrate my family life with my work life in a way that's critical. People ask me if I make sculpture anymore. The restaurant is a gigantic sculpture. It's the windows, the walls, it's the floor, it's the plates the food's served on, menus and the graphic design, and even the way that we as workers in the restaurant interact with each other and with the customers. It's all one gigantic sculpture. I hope you enjoyed visiting me and I look forward to meeting you here at Houseman. Stick around because coming up next, we are checking out a reimagined Upper West Side townhome. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Open House NYC. Now we're at this townhouse on the Upper West Side designed by architect Michele Vici. Michele's clients wanted the property to feel more like a loft than a multi-floor townhome. Check out the results. Hello, my name is Michele Butidivici. I am principal of S4A, Space for Architecture, and welcome to the Upper West Side. We were hired by our client to renovate this 1900 townhouse. It's, as you can see, very traditional, the exterior, as it was designed a long time ago, but you'll be surprised on the interior of the house. So let's go inside. My clients were a bit nervous about moving from the apartment where they were living and moving into a townhouse with five stories. The idea that came to my mind was to basically work with the loft concept. But in this case, of course, it's going to be a vertical loft. The loft feel starts from the first floor, where from the entry hall all the way into the kitchen dining. The idea in here was to make it a, a sculptural element and to be as much as possible in line with the aesthetic of the rest of the house. So as you can see, the kitchen is white and in its entirety, except for this niche that we created underneath the top cabinets. The kitchen shared the same space with the dining room. Our decision here was to give the dining room what it's supposed to have, a beautiful painting. In our case, the painting is this beautiful floor-to-ceiling, wall-to-wall partition that we introduced. This glazed wall not only allows them to overlook their garden, but also gives them a quintessential New York view. Being this a townhouse, we had to design a stair. And the stair was the one element in the house that gave us the opportunity to guarantee a vertical continuity between floors. So we gave the stair this shape that reads almost like a white snake 
that wrap itself up all the way to the top level. So here we are in the living room of the house. A defining feature is the fireplace. Here, as well as in the rest of the house, the idea was to keep the furniture to a minimum, to let the architecture speak for itself. I hope you could see the passion that went into this project. It is, in fact, my belief that the key element to the success of an architectural project is a great collaboration between the client, the architect, and the general contractor. Thank you for coming on the tour. Grazie. Arrivederci. Thanks for watching. Like what you see on the show? Well, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We have so many more beautiful homes to share. It's all about love. Share these homes, you know?